six in the league beat Wichita State by 12 yesterday. The South Florida Bulls 24 and 6, 16 and 2 in the American. And it's UAB winning the tip, the first of two games here at Fort Worth, Texas. Temple and Florida Atlantic to follow. Oh, and short Vlad Voyard to all. And Chuck Jones, our officials, and the first basket belongs to the UAB Blazers as we take a look at the South Florida starting five off the bucket by Eric Gaines. Placer Knox, co player of the year, Youngblood, with the big Stroud and Pryor. And a high flag rejection. A great start for UAB already. Games with a bucket. And there is Yaxa Lindeborg, the defensive player of the year in the American Conference. Nice little UCLA cut to get open. Plus there just got lost on defense. Case of Pryor back into the starting lineup today. Back out for Knox, who hit five threes a season high yesterday. Knox pulls up, misses one off the side of the rim, and Lindeborg has the first of what should be many rebounds today, averaging ten and a half to lead the league. Starting five for UAB, Christian Coleman. Is back in there. He had just his fourth start of the season yesterday. He and led the board the bigs. Daniel Ortiz, a great shooting day, along with Johnson and Gaines. And Ortiz moved into the starting lineup after scoring 16 off the bench in a win over Wichita State last night. UAB is going to have some options if they can read the switches correctly, right? When you read the switches, you understand, all right, who's switching on me? What advantage do I have? Roll of the basket, Lindenberg has the advantage. Good start for UAB. Brandon Stroud with a South Florida foul. These Blazers, a pretty fast-paced team, scored at 77 per game in league play. Middle of the pack offensive efficiency. There's an airball three from Ortiz, which is saved and finds its way back to Ortiz. Up for Lindenberg to beat the shot clock, and UAB scored on the first two possessions. Well, that was Lindenberg all, all around, right? Saving the basketball and an air ball. Give yourself another opportunity at it. He, he's going to impact the game in, in so many ways. It's really, it's, just, it's not just the tangible things, it's the intangibles as well. Lasser around it out. Missed wow. threes on the first two possessions and a strong rebound by Lindeborg. Look, there's a difference when he rebounds, right? There are strong rebounds and then just don't even try if you're not Lindenborg. I mean, he just grabs it with two hands and takes it away from everybody else, including his own teammates. 18 and 14 yesterday. Down low to Coleman, working against Pryor. No, the tip is there from Yaxa Lendeborg, who is all over the game right now, blocking shots and rebounding and scoring, and UAB has the first six. Well, South Florida hasn't really been able to get into their movement, and I like the switching defense, which is just disruption from UAB. Pryor will step into a three. Pryor will miss a three, and there's the first non-Lendeborg rebound for UAB. It's Ortiz. Fired up, slamming the ball to the court with some energy in UAB step. Uh, UAB is just making plays. There's Lindenberg saving it out top, and then you kind of get this going. He gets the lob. I mean, that was all Lindenberg. He's just going to create opportunities for teammates. That's just what he does. He creates opportunities within the game with what he does on the defensive end. The high motor, the energy, all that he embodies, th that's what UAB wants to be today. Already foul trouble for South Florida. Brandon Stroud, their senior forward, with two early fouls. So Sam Hines Jr. will replace him. Bulls typically go nine deep. Blazers are about eight deep. On the drive, that scoop is missed. And the putback is there, and guess who it is? Yaxel Lendeborg has five of the seven total rebounds in the game. It's 8 nothing UAB. I wonder at what point South Florida considers bringing in Selton Miguel. American sixth man of the year may not be long. I just say you need a spark. Yeah, you know, you need something to start to find it in this game. And we're gonna get to the under 16, and they may not have scored. Prior off a of Heinz Jr. screen. Guarded by Lindeborg. A step back three is short. Rebound down to Eric Gaines. How about this start for UAB? They've scored on four straight possessions. Lindeborg and an offensive foul is a call. The charge drawn by the co-player of the year in the league, Chris Youngblood. That's a good one to pick up. I mean, I don't know. It's so bang, bang. I'm just glad I'm not an official. I'd rather be the guy that gets to criticize him over here by doing nothing. Just watching it in slow-mo four times and going, ah, that's a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> slow motion is the most wonderful and dangerous thing ever happened oh, to TV. 
Hines on the drive. Lundenborg doesn't want to pick up that second foul, and Hines still missed the layup. You know, smart play by Hines, though. Give him credit. I mean, that situational awareness, which is communicated to the team, and it's communicated amongst one, one another. Lindenburg's got one. Let's get, see if we can get another one. He even coaxed the officials into calling a foul. I get why he missed. He was probably more concerned with trying to pick up the foul than he was finished the shot. Kind of thing, kind of little thing. We've seen South Florida do all year. Yep, Won smart. so many close games. Amir Abdurrahim, first year coach, the American coach of the year. Knox fires a three. Offensive rebound to Hines again, and he was fouled. A little stumble came after a push. Sam Hines gets bumped. Christian Coleman with his first. Has there been anybody cooler than Amir Abdul-Rahim? No. I just mean cooler in every possible way. It's not maybe the most flashy, popular thing. I just mean cool. Like, he gets it. He's a good teacher. He's a good coach. He really gets the big picture, the macro, along with the micro. I think there's a reason why this team has been so good. I think his personality... Is big. I think he's coaching to his personality. They're free flowing, but they're connected. There's, there's a lot of good things in there, and it's done in year one. It's remarkable. It's a team that was where were they picked? Ninth. There you go. And that was probably generous given where they were last year. Hate to shoot. South Florida's 0 for 7. They missed five threes. Young blood inside for Pryor with a hesitation, with a feed to Hines, shuffling the feet and scoring the first South Florida basket. He shuffled all right. <laughs> the pirouette. Fourth year junior transfer from Denver as the first two. Ortiz. Here's Butta Johnson. Off the mark from three. Rebound to Jose Placer. See if the Bulls can run in transition. They can. They get a good look. It's a young blood three. Great find, particularly when you look at who's getting ready to check in. They start to find a little offense, which means they're kind of leveling up and adjusting to the game. It's a slow start for South Florida, but man, when they start to find it, they're good. And it's South Miguel and Jaden Reed at the next whistle. This is a three for game, straight on, in and out. Grabbed by Pryor. I still think UAB needs to get to the basket. Just try to turn corners. The initial UCLA cut they used in the first play, it worked well. Placer for Knox, got a good look. And Pryor crashes the oh, offensive glass, and he got fouled by Lindeborg. Oh, boy, is that a big one. That is significant. Wow. I mean, look, you could try as hard as you want to avoid picking up that second foul, but it turns out to be a loose ball where you get it here. And what did we spend our break doing? Would you like to tell the folks? <laughs> Tried so hard to get Lindenborg's name. Yeah, pronounced. there's only one in, in there. Yeah, like the Lindenborg. jersey in me just keeps saying Lindenborg. Linden, and you think there's an extra N in there, so they had to phonetically okay. spell it out for me to actually get it Go right. Go get me a water bottle. Chris yes. Youngblood with a three. So an eight-nothing start for UAB. Now eight straight for USF, and there is Yaxel Lindenborg, who is on the bench, having picked up two fouls in just over five minutes. I'm sure that I'm sure water is disappointed with me as well. Yes, well, typically the case Gaines throws it away prior Good play oh, prior. That's what he, he threw does. it off of JV and Davis. I mean it, we talk about high motors with Lindenborg, but it, Prior is the guy that really just impacts the game and he does it with energy he does it with these hustle plays and you start to see their bench get up for it too and, and they really feed off of what Pryor gives them Pryor Hines corner Miguel passes up a three has a couple of good options Youngblood will drive it Looking for an interior pass back out for Reed. It's Miguel. It's a three. It's a thing of beauty That is yeah, South that Florida is basketball. It. That is exactly what we put in the open that ball movement, connectedness, you know, playing for one another. And I said, when I was watching tape on them yesterday, I said, that, you know, they they don't just feed off one another. They feed one another. They, they really seek out the best shot, which gets the defense chasing, and it really gives you control. It's up to by Johnson, tracked down by the 5'10", 161-pound freshman Reed, who has some great speed and will use it to set up Hines. Didn't want to take the three. Pryor does not. Now he does. A couple of jab steps. He'll feed the cutting young blood instead, who draws a foul. Wow, this is an offensive clinic for South Florida. Four for five after an 0 for 7 start. 
Well, you almost have to establish your ball movement, too. I mean, that's something like coaches will say to a team, say, hey, we want to get out there and establish our ball movement. Well, you've got to establish good spacing first. When you get good spacing, you can start to attack those gaps, draw defense, get the ball moving, play the next pass, play those long closeouts, get the ball moving again, find the open shot. You're also creating a good rhythm with your ball movement. Like, we don't say that enough. When you can create a rhythm with ball movement, you shoot a higher percentage. Sometimes it's simpler than we make it. It's just that you have to do those things against a team that's trying to keep you from doing those things. So maybe it's harder than I'm making it. Young blood at the line for two, hits them both. He's got eight. 13 nothing run for South Florida. Tony Tony's on the floor right now for UAB with a ball. That's T O N Y T O N E Y, Tony Tony. Gaines lost it, recollected it. This is the term we liked it so much we named him twice. That's right. Inside Davis, strong move. JV and Davis got fouled before that tip in. 6'9", 265-pound Javian Davis, a fifth-year player, will go to the line. He's another beast down low. I mean, really just gets his body in there, creates space with the body. But UAB's got to create space on offense, too. I mean, we, we say a lot about South Florida. They create space, good ball movement, great rhythm, all that goodness. But if you want to attack the paint, particularly off the bounce, then you need to have good spacing on the floor. Describe that one. Flat. Okay. I mean, he's a 74% free throw shooter. <laughs> Not if he shoots it like that. No. It's funny how sometimes it comes off and it's just weird to see if he's able to correct it. 163rd career game, JV and Davis. That was way better. It, it just still a little flat, but that first one just came off funky. UAB has not scored in nearly four and a half minutes. Prior feeds Hines. Miguel, deep one. Too short. Rebound down to the hands of Alejandro Vasquez. He's okay. off the bench for UAB today. He didn't score a field goal in eight minutes and still beat South Florida. That's right. UAB lived at the line in the first meeting between these teams. They won 75-71. They had 30 made free throws. Vesquez against Miguel. Couldn't shake him. Interior, this is Tony. Tony, Tony rejected by Youngblood with 3.4 to shoot. It's a good defensive possession. And you just watch the eyeballs, right? See me and see ball, those simple principles. The question is, do you adhere to them when you don't? You often get scored on. The simplest principles still work in the game today. If anything, they work more. Got to get a quick one off the inbound. Vasquez steps in, adjusts the shot, and drills it. Alejandro Vasquez with a tough two. Snaps a 13-0 South Florida run. Again, they work this play. Pryor, Hines at the high post, kick out for a three. It's Youngblood, who is three for three from deep. Yeah, and Andy Kennedy said we can't really let them just line up open threes. And there's going to be some adjustments that you make if you're Andy Kennedy. One might be what defenses are really hurting us, what, what are really helping us. Gains. Not, not sure the 1-3-1 one, one is is something they're going to stick with, with Pryor's ability to yep. pass over the top. I mean, there it is. You want to trap up top in that 1-3-1, one, one, but if you can get the ball middle, it collapses the defense. Quick kick out. You got young blood on one side, Selton. More important than you reading what people can read themselves. <laughs> Did you not think I was going to mention it? <laughs> I, didn't Did you have to to rush it? I didn't know if you saw it. I didn't know if you saw it. I like to be the first to break the news. That's how we are these days. So it's a wonder you're not on Twitter board. Yeah, There's Andy Kennedy, our former colleague. He used to be in studio with Andy Kennedy, who's a terrific basketball mind, a terrific guy. And he was UAB a good analyst. His four really years. Good. More wins in a four-year period than any time in school history. 99 in the four years under Andy Kennedy. And consider what he's he's kind of lived through as you're building that, as you're having that success. I mean, four years of success like that is, is I'll say, unprecedented. It's, it's remarkable. But think about the landscape and how it's changed since the Pac-12 is no longer, right? You, you consider that and NIL and transfer portal and what that means to programs like UAB. I mean, it's pretty remarkable. Reed with a three. It's good. Jaden Reed with a fifth South Florida three.
And the freshman, their best shooter by percentage at 47% has his first today. And it's not like South Florida's playing with the rule that the ball has to be moved past five times before you can shoot. No, they just pass it until they get a good shot. That's what they do. Vasquez inside, trying to tip in his own miss. South Florida 5 for 6 from 3 after 0 for 5 starts. Look at the ball moving. All right, look, we're going to occupy the block with an advantage, which means defense has to collapse. Lindenborg, Lindenborg is not going to be on the post, so he's really playing the backside, just chasing the play where he's, he's less effective. Because they just move it so well. Everybody feels confident to shoot. They shoot it with conviction. When you shoot it with conviction and it comes off good ball movement, again, you make a higher percentage. South Florida yesterday had 18 assists and 30 made field goals. They have five assists on six made field goals today. Here's Youngblood, three for three from deep, 11 points in the game, driving it on Lindeborg with the two fouls and came up empty. Big man can run the floor too. Lindeborg will distribute it late to Tony Tony, and that feels good for a UOB bucket. Do you think Lindeborg's important to this team? I mean, contests the shot with two fouls, which I like the attack from Youngblood. And then leads the break and dishes it off for an easy layup, one they needed. Reed, his defender slipped. So he's back on his feet. Here's Self Miguel, sixth man of the year in the American. She begins again. Do that. He's cool about it, too. Kind of like his coach, right? He just goes out and gets buckets. Got cool demeanor. I think when the team's demeanor is consistent with the coach, well, that's a big one. I think that matters the most. Right? If you are a reflection of your coach, that consistency develops the culture that we talk about. That culture is ultimately what solidifies you in so many ways when recruiting. This is who we are. This is how we play. Five point game after a butted Johnson three. Prior inside, no. Rebound on the London board already is fifth. Up the floor comes Vasquez for UAB, which likes to play with pace. Linda Borg back for Alejandro Vasquez. I wouldn't double, actually. I would let him. I'd see if we could pick up a charge. He's a good passer, too. Yeah. And he finds an outlet. Tony, Tony around it out for three. JV and Davis crashes the glass. On the bounce, it's Vasquez inside for the deuce. That's really what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to score in the paint. You've got to be able to attack, but if I'm South Florida and if I got Miguel or Lindeborg, I would really hold off on doubling, see if we could get him to pick up a charge. Lindeborg is going to switch with Reed for a moment. Now he'll step out for Miguel, who gets a screen, who drives it into Davis and spins it home. That's Kobe Knox, the sophomore, with a tough two and a chance for one more. Kobe Knox has been really good, and this is just Davis being a second late. When bigs are a second late, even a split second late, they tend to foul. And that's a foul and a remarkable finish. Only the second two-point field goal made by South Florida so far. The Tampa native Kobe Knox. Younger brother of Kevin Knox, former Kentucky star. Older brother of Carter Knox, who just committed to Kentucky last week. And Kobe began his career at Grand Canyon, transferred to USF this year. Andy Kennedy, before the game today, told us he thinks Kobe Knox is South Florida's most unsung player. He's a winner. I mean, that's the thing. He was a winner at Grand Canyon. His family's a bunch of winners. This guy's, and winners are the guys that do what it takes to put you in the best possible situation night in, night out to be able to win. Guarantees no outcome. Six-point lead for South Florida. The number one seed here in the American Athletic Conference. 16 and one in the last 17 games jumper from Lindeborg is good He's got six five and a couple of blocks in just eight minutes It's interesting how often you see teams switch up defense and immediately give up a basket He was back to the 1-3-1 one here with Coleman on top Miguel passes up the three And the paint threw it away a takeaway for Eric Gaines the steals leader in the American is slapped on the wrist by Reed Eric Gaines with free throws to try to make this a two-point game when we return to the first American semifinal.
play, the way that we practice, the way that we handle ourselves. And he said that has contributed to the momentum you're seeing this South Florida team display right now, fellas. And, and that's a really good point because we think of purpose as being something that's a little bit more superficial, right? The purpose is to win. Well, yeah, get in line. Everybody wants to win. But do you understand the purposes beneath the surfaces and, ha and, and how important those are? That's what puts you in the best situation, best probability of winning. It's really hard to get guys in one year, two years. Gosh, if you got them for three years, that's amazing. But it's even hard with three and four year guys to get them to buy into everything beneath the surface. Brandon Stroud turns it over. Lendeborg pushes ahead for Christian Coleman. And a quick 6-0 spurt has tied the game for the four seed UAB. I think he might have to stay with his 1-3-1 regardless and make your adjustments just to keep Lendeborg out of trouble. Miguel inside around Lindeborg. No. Knocked around. Rebound to Gaines. You can never sit pretty with Andy Kennedy, who's always switching up his defensive looks. Johnson follows his own miss. And it's grabbed by Brandon Stroud, who's back in the game after two early fouls. Stroud would take the ball down the floor. He had eight assists yesterday for South Florida, a career high. USF coming off an 81-59 win over ECU in the quarters. Four double-digit scores. Shot 52%, hit 14 threes. Seth Miguel, American sixth man of the year. Gives it up for Knox. And Knox follows his own miss. He'll set up Miguel this time. That was not the winning formula either. And it's games. We couldn't handle it. And Stroud cracks the offensive glass, keeps the possession. A long one at that for USF. It's just such a challenge for UAB to have to figure out how to play Lindeborg, but not put him in a situation where he can get himself into trouble because he's not able to be as aggressive as he wants to be. They take him out now, Lindeborg. Still with the two fouls, did well to manage his play without the fouls. And in fact, UAB ties the score upon his return to the game. They were down six when he entered. So plus nine with Lindeborg on the floor right now as Gaines gets his second steal. Gaines behind the back around Pryor. Gaines will get to the line. That was a saucy driver for Eric Gaines. Fourth year junior from Livonia, Georgia going to line. And I don't know if there's a better open court player in the American than Gaines. Like he's really good about getting where he wants to in space. Struggles a little bit when he doesn't have the space. I mean, it's pretty much everybody in college basketball, but he's just really good in open space. Out of two players to lead their league in assists and steals per game, Langley, UNC Greensboro, and SoCon, and Eric Gaines. Five and a half assists, 2.3 steals per game. He's given UAB its first lead since it was 8 6. It's an 8 0 Blazer run. I'm sure, you have that stat just without having to look it up or anything. I would love to take credit for that, but no, our fantastic sports and information group came up with that one. All credit to them. Placer. That lead didn't last long for UAB. Jose Placer with a seventh South Florida three. I think the ball movement's better when Pryor's on the floor. He's a really good ball mover. Under, undervalued, underappreciated ball mover, I should say. Use him around the perimeter, he makes the right decision. He cuts through the defense, gets himself in position. Good things happen when Pryor's on the floor. I think on the surface, you look at him and say, he's wild, he's bird man, he's this, he's that. He's also really good. Gaines, that's a tough step back, too. And there's Pryor sealing off for the rebound. He hasn't scored, he's still affecting the game in so many ways. Lasser knocked away by Gaines. Another takeaway in South Florida's fourth turnover. Ortiz will drive it, hang, and cannot spin it in. And look at Pryor immediately up the floor to Youngblood. Youngblood to Knox. Knox to Placer. And that three is in the hands of Butter Johnson. Another great look, though, from deep. Johnson. Inside to Davis. 
got the switch, trying to muscle plus air. And Davis draws a triple team and a foul. Earlier you saw Sam Himes Jr. back up big for South Florida, number 20, take a right elbow to the face right there on a drive from Eric Gaines. Hines went to the locker room, towel over his face. And we have not seen Sam Hines Jr. return to the floor since. South Florida had Corey Walker Jr. leave the floor briefly yesterday. We have not seen him today either, though we were told he was available. Champ Week presented by Principal continues tomorrow with the SEC Men's Basketball Championship in Nashville at 1 Eastern Noon Central on ESPN. Bruce Pearls, Auburn Tigers will be there. After knocking off Mississippi State, they'll face the winner of Florida and Texas A&M. The 4, 6, 7, and the 9 in the SEC semis. What a strange year in Nashville. Tennessee, Kentucky, and Alabama all got knocked off by Lester Seeds yesterday. Texas A&M, one of the teams that might be paying very close attention to our next game, Florida Atlantic and Temple. FAU's the only at-large candidate in the American, it seems. And so all the teams on the bubble will be rooting for the winner of this game. If FAU beats Temple, they'll all be pulling hard for... Oh, they'll be rooting for FAU, not going to win this game. I have that reverse. If you're on the bubble, you want FAU to win the American because they are the only at-large candidate, according to Joe Lenardi. Even though South Florida's had a great year, they do not have a quad one. Yeah. Win. But if you're a decent human being and you followed the American, you'd like to see South Florida Absolutely. in no matter what. I think they've really earned it with what they've done in a very competitive conference. This three by Miguel. I only, I only mean 50% of that. Which 50%? Oh, a throw down by Coleman to put UAB back in front. The sarcastic part. I see. Just for folks who've heard you for the first time, John is occasionally sarcastic on broadcast. Only on occasion. Yep. Only at the under 16, 12, 8, and 4 stretches. <laughs> South Florida 7 for 19 from 3. Bit of a scoring drive here. They will not break down a field goal, but Pryor will ferociously get to the line. UAB looking to hand South Florida a loss for the second time this year. Two teams. Now, he got hit on an inadvertent elbow. There's nothing malicious. Of course, it probably doesn't feel inadvertent right now with that face mask on. We'll see if he comes back in the game. Look, South Florida, there's a there's a toughness. There's like a cool toughness to Amir Abdurrahim, yeah. who's not flashy, who's not showy. He was asked about his playing style. He said, he said, I don't have a playing style. Our playing style is built on player development and clarity and confidence. This is a confident bunch. And they've got 16-2 and two in a season where they were picked to finish ninth. Yeah. Really an afterthought this conference. That player development is what gives you clarity, right? The clarity it also gives you purpose, right? So all those things are connected, but so is not being married to exactly how you want to play. I, I, I think you've got to have concepts. In terms of your style but at the same time if your style doesn't support or isn't supported by your personnel then you're never really going to maximize your potential shot clock has it reset johnson a good from three there's lenderborg with the offensive rebound playing with two fouls and missing over Pryor, who grabs another rebound is seven you can see lenderborg is really holding back i mean the, the shot was fine but the second chance opportunity is typically something he goes after hard South Miguel drives it into Davis. Back out for Youngblood. Oh. <laughs> that was almost awesome. Nice try, Chris. Appreciate the effort. It was actually awesome, though. Like, he jumped in the air and put it behind his back. Even their travels are cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even their travels are cool. That's the fifth South Florida turnover. Says the coolest guy in the arena. That's right. You should see me in a Stetson. 30-30 <laughs> here in the first semifinal. South Florida and UAB. Gaines gets to the left hand and a pretty finish for Eric Gaines. It's almost like for four games you have to structure spacing. Because if you have it, he's so good. He's got a team high 10. Miguel hesitated. Shooters all around the perimeter right now for South Florida, including Youngblood. Pryor just got absolutely...
Absolutely mailbox by Gaines. Wow. What's a mailbox? He was completely and utterly undercut. The hell's that a mailbox? Boing. You never got mailbox? Actually, I think a mailbox was from behind. Oh, you yeah, crouch yeah, behind, yeah, somebody. behind somebody a, and you get him to go back. It's a front side mailbox. That's called bullying, Kevin. <laughs> no, I didn't get or give any of that. What kind of job that you had? Two fouls on games. He joins Christian Coleman and Lindeborg in the two foul first half club for UAB. So he was reverse mailbox. Reverse mailbox. A bail box. Prior to the line, this is a one and one. Help us. Pryor missed it. 82 percent. He's the best free throw shooter on the roster, and he does not convert. I would look at UAB trying to lift this offense. Look, look at the uh, lift the defense. Look at this offense. See how they're all starting high. You want to get that defense lifted because you want to get to the basket. Or you can get to the basket. Here you go. That's good stuff. Almost good stuff. Davis couldn't slide it through for Coleman. Only the third turnover for UAB. But you've got everything lifted as the ball goes to the opposite side. If that defense doesn't drop to see man see basketball, the, the two back cuts really got you set up. So slip by Davis and then the right idea, just not the right pass. Coleman once again ahead of the 1 3 1 defense. Playing with those two fouls. The other one touch pass for Pryor. A bobble, and now Pryor, who got hit in the knee, gets hit on the back. Davis jumps over the top. That's the second on JV is Davis. Pryor's taking it from every angle. Really. I mean, yeah. Davis might have gotten the worst of it. Pryor's been hit in the face, in the back, in the knee. He's first team all guy you want to play with but hate I, I to think, play against. I think he's my favorite player to watch. Yeah. I mean, like, if you were making that team, you would say Pryor, Lindeborg, I think who else? Who did he have yes, yesterday? I want to play with but hate to play against. Yes, yes. You, you, they might not even be the best player, but you pick Nick a first. Boyd might be that guy yeah, Nick too. Boyd might be one of those guys. John L. Davis for sure, because he's just like, you can't cover him. Oh, there's a number of them out there. This conference has a lot of those guys where they're really tough competitors. They may not be NBA All-Stars, but you've got really high-level competitors. Flyers missed two front ends now, so USF's left four points out there in the last two possessions from their best free throw shooter, Casey Pryor. Will Shavers in the game for the first time. Little used big, number 25 for UAB. A strong drive by Coleman with the two fouls to put UAB up four. Coleman did a good job recognizing the switch, and, and the switch came late, so the defender was a half step behind. Pryor, look at all the big men out in Pryor's face right now. UAB scrambling into position. They just got back. I think it was Vasquez to knock it away there from Youngblood on the alley-oop try. Pryor's such a good passer that he commands your attention. You have to ball pressure him. The problem is he's tall if you pass over the top. A minute to play in the first half. That's been marred by foul trouble for UAB, but they still have the lead. Johnson took a hit there from Reed. He draws his second foul, and Buddha Johnson will shoot two. That's going to have to be the plan, uh, not just for the last 57.1 of the first half, but really for the next 20 minutes. Is you've got to be on the attack if you're UAB. You look at that pocket where that South Florida had. They went on a nice run after really doing nothing for the three and a half, first three and a half minutes of the game. They found it. That ball movement was just terrific. They got that thing slinging around. They developed a good rhythm. They made shots. Tonight, Champ Week presented by Principal continues in Kansas City and Washington, D.C. The Phillips 66 Big 12 Men's Championship. Bring your sledgehammers. Yeah. Iowa State and yeah. Houston, maybe the two best defensive Bears teams in the country. Team. Then the men's tournament presented by T. Rowe Price. Who saw this coming? NC Everybody. State. Look at the coach. Five Bayheim. and five. <laughs> they have something to celebrate now as they face Duff City, North Carolina at 8.30 East and 7.30 Did Central. Coach Bayheim have something to do with that? I mean, he gave me some bulletin board material. And I thought it was kind of funny. It was funny. Um, it wouldn't be funny if I said it. But it was funny that he did. Like, what have they done in the last few years to be celebrating about? <laughs> Here's the drive from South Miguel. and left it short. South Florida 9 for 28 in the first half. They had that one red-hot shooting stretch, and otherwise, 
They have been ice cold against a UAB team that's actually one of the worst defensive teams in the conference. They've been great today. They take the timeout. They use it or lose it. Uh, they, are, they have that red-hot three-point shooting stretch. They're only seven for 20 in this first half. Yeah, but the thing is, that's really not by design. It, it's by execution. When you move the basketball well, defense gets spaced and defense starts chasing. Driving kicks don't really lead to layups. They often lead to open threes. And when you have good spacing and good ball movement, you're going to get open three looks. Why wouldn't you take it? Johnson steps in. Johnson floats it home with the right hand. That was more fun. That was smooth. I can't. I struggle to say it without the ER. I just... It sounds ridiculous when I do it. Lasser pulling up. Lasser misses a jump shot. Do we have a story on our hands here, folks? The UAB Blazers, the four seed in the American, on the backs of a single solitary three-pointer. It's the paint. UAB leads it by eight. Let's check in with Byron. Yeah, I talked to him here as he was walking out. And he said he just has to stay positive. Told the team to stay positive. They've been down by more before at halftime and come back to win. But he also said, remember what got us here, that team unity. We have to share the ball, not turn it over, and get back to doing what we've been doing all season, fellas. Byron, South Florida's trailed to the half 13 times. They're 8-5 and five in those games. And they get the opening three from Kobe Knox here in the second. And I think back to that 1-3-1. One, and I think the ball moves a little too freely against the 1-3-1. One, one. And I said, ball movement creates rhythm. That's what you want to disrupt if you're UAB. There's Johnson out of the big Corner! Answer. Second three of the game for UAB. It's Ephraim Butter Johnson. He's hit both. This is big. Let's go Butter sign behind the bench. Uh -huh. It's in gold. You can't miss it. Nicknamed by his uncle because his game was so smooth. Flyer from Youngblood. That's too deep. In fact, it was so deep it was pretty. Bank shot three for Casey Pryor. And this second half has started with three consecutive threes. I need you to define pretty. Pretty effective. How about that? Okay. Casey Pryor with five. South Florida is now nine for 22 from deep. A little compact one three one it looks like. Gaines deep one. And Gaines with a triple. Four consecutive possessions with a three to start this half. What kind of basketball can be? How about that? UAB has won the half. It was the, the first 20 minutes. The power of the Stetsons. If it's two in the second, how about Stroud? That's way off target. And grabbed by Davis. Hit from behind by Pryor. That'll be the second foul on Casey Pryor. First it was, you know, first it was Butta Johnson in the corner, and then Gaines just lines one up. Little poor closeout from Youngblood, and Gaines drains it. Four straight threes to start the second half. UAB is 329th in the country in percentage of points from three. Andy Kennedy told us before the game, look, we might only hit six or seven. They've only hit three, but they've got an eight-point lead all the same. Lindeberg will try a three, and he'll miss it. Not by Davis, and it's loose. It's picked up by Vasquez. Second chance on the possession. Alejandro Vasquez goes in strong. Goodness, Man, that was a strong take. The way he got gathered his footing, gathered his feet, I should say, and then just went straight up, and there's Pryor. This just been shot answer to start the first half, or second half. Fort Worth, Texas. That was a cowboy hat. Lindeberg had the two early fouls. Hasn't picked up one since. Trying to go high-low with Davis, who saves it back to Lindeborg. Spinning in the lane, losing his footing. Takeaway for South Florida. Reed for Youngblood. And Youngblood gets hit up high and fouled. It's a good foul. I think that's a good foul because... We talk a lot of priority talk about it, but the reality is you can use fouling to disrupt the attack. If you don't have foul trouble, you can take easy ones away and at least make them work. I think using fouling correctly when you want to be disruptive, like I would use fouling correctly against FAU. That's the type of team, if they start to build it, I would just foul them a little bit. If they start to get ahead of the play, I just foul them. And then I change my defense. Just be disruptive. I think you could use fouling to be very disruptive. You know, not the harmful fouls, just the annoying ones. The only reason that foul is not good is it's the third on yes. the game. Yes. We will stay in there.
Not, not a problem, though. Gaines is nice. He's a guy that can stay off the ball and just be smart about it. Stroud goes into Coleman. Terrific defense by Christian Coleman. Then spins away from Kobe Knox. And Coleman finally finds Johnson for an out. Vasquez got prior in the air. Johnson in the corner. Yes, sir! But a Johnson with his third three. And this is the largest lead for UAB. And that was Vasquez all the way. Really just, just setting that up. Great pump fake. One dribble, occupied defenders, kicked out the butt of Johnson. That's good basketball, and the reason why they've got to be laying down, getting massaged, and doing what these guys are doing. That's what they should be doing. Temple should be gassed right now, but they're playing with house money. They have nothing left to lose. They lost 10 in a row at one point this season. They were very close, and now they've started to figure out how to compete to win. Out of the timeout prior, set up by Reed. He missed a three. Yeah, so Lindeborg has his seventh rebound. You have to credit the coaches in this league. Adam Fisher's done a terrific job. Andy Kennedy, the most successful four years of school history. Mir Abdul Rahim, most successful season in school history in year one. Aaron Fern, first year, third seed in the tournament. For Charlotte, excuse me. How about this? this Vasquez five. with a three, and UAB's got four for five from deep in the half. South Florida, you're sitting there going, wait, who's this team that we scouted and don't remember? Like, the, the fact that they're making this many threes, seeking out this many threes. Here's Stroud yet to score until right now. Brandon Stroud plus a foul. And he wants his third. I really know how that's a foul. Lindeborg on the floor. Davis comes in, they're minus six. Let's see where the next few minutes of this game goes and how long Lindeborg stays on the bench. Brandon Stroud with a three-point play. I want to encourage within the, 11. I really want to encourage the no call. Like the no call, there's nothing wrong with the no call. Gaines had it stripped, and Owen Short's gonna run in here, talk to Officiated crew, Chuck Jones, Vlad Boyer, and Tadal, they'll say it's UAB ball. Oh, might have gone off games, but after the Lindeborg foul, I don't know. Who knows? I like this extended pressure, though. Got to attack it. Slip, though. Vasquez will attack it, and he throws it off of Coleman's hands. Take away for Knox, and then he got dislodged by Vasquez. <laughs> First foul on Andro Vasquez. These are those moments. I, I talk about moments all the time. Like this, this is one of those moments where you've got to start to build by getting good looks, build by getting good ball movement, start to build that rhythm again. Get the UAB defense to chase a little bit, so they're not initiating and dictating the way this game's played. Only Knox has been holding his left hand since that foul's flexing and running down the court. One of their best shooters, Youngblood. Turns it over to Vasquez on the inside. Vasquez pulling his way to the rim. He got fouled. <laughs> Alejandro Vasquez, fourth year junior out of Queens Junior College. Kid started at St. Bonaventure. What an impact he's had this year. It's almost like he's telling you, I'm going to go from here to there. Go ahead and stop. He's going to go through you, just slightly around you. You're going to catch a piece of him as you try to stop him. He is physical and tough. No blood second foul. Inside Vasquez again. Seals off Reed. Flexes and puts the Blazers up a Baker's dozen. South Florida 16 and 1 against the rest of the American this year. They may be 0 2 against UAB when this is all said and done. Miguel, that's Knox, beg your pardon, missed the three. Stroud with a rebound in between two black jerseys. Stroud is fouled again as the ball was momentarily wedged between the rim and the backboard. Vasquez does a good job, but when he gets position, he holds that seal. He's just going to come underneath. He's just on the wrong side. And at that point, you're beat. I think the physicality of UAB has to be what wins them the game. The problem is if foul trouble starts to go in the opposite direction, they can't be as physical. That was Coleman's third. And Lindeborg is going to return to this game. He only sat for 53 seconds, so replace Coleman. He just told Owen Short, hey, by the way, you were wrong. 
That was not a foul on me. And you should make sure you give me the next call. I've actually said that to officials before. How'd that work out for you? It was fine because you have to do it in a calm voice. You just got to, hey, by the way, we looked at him. Uh, you owe me one. Did you try to use like the Bene Gesserit voice from Dune to control their mind? No, I, I really, I, I, first off, I never really knew what that was. I have seen the movie. I just, the fact that you knew the actual terminology just reminded me of your status. My status is knowing one of the most popular science fiction books of all time. And a movie that's made $400 million. What was, sequels to make what was the other one against, against Duke that I got in trouble for that I didn't know? Something Don about Hotel. Windows. Yeah, Don Quixote. Yeah, Bricks at three. I left that in seventh grade. It's a good rebound by Davis over Pryor. Another fresh 20. Why not? Ames will miss it short. There's a big collision underneath. Vasquez Jeez. ran right into Selton again. Well, UAB has played physically in this game. And reads to kill rhythm and flow. And it's the hardest thing for both teams to find in the game. These are still college players. They're not professionals. They might be paid, but they're not professionals. They don't understand how to really create it, pick it up again. You disrupt the game, the game is it suffers. Scrat, that was knocked away by Lendeborg. Well, somebody else going to check back in the game. After taking that hard foul, he'll replace Reed. It's like a car accident, man. Like, why don't you go run into Davis and see how that feels? Why would I do that? I'm just teaching you perspective, Dad. What's what, why do I need perspective? I'm sitting next to you, that's all the perspective I could ever need. Fire with a rebound off the young blood miss. Miguel has hesitated a few times today, and now he will rise and fire and hit the three. South Miguel, sixth man of the year in the American, hits his third. It's a really hard shot, right? He took rhythm out of the shot by waiting and not taking the first look. Brings it back down, brings it back around the defender and gets that shot up. On the other side, Vasquez, no. Offensive rebound, Davis. Johnson with a head fake. Johnson with the young blood draped over him. Beats inside to Vasquez. Wow. He well, has been a beast on the blocks. And if, if you're ever allowed to flex, that would be one. He has been a beast. Alejandro Vasquez was ejected yesterday after a flagrant two technical. Played just five minutes. He has been as impactful as anybody today. Pryor, eh, Lendeborg didn't want to foul him there. Smart play. Give up the two. The lead is down to eight. Say Pryor needs to just go straight up with it. There's a better chance of you getting fouled if you stay on that side of the rim where Lindeborg was. Johnson at the controls for the UAB Blazers. The winning is four year stretch in program history right now. 99 wins in the last four years. NCAA tournament two years ago. Vasquez three. That ball is eventually tracked down by Miguel. Down the floor for Pryor. Into Vasquez. Pryor scores it. He's got 11. He's coming alive. And so is the South Florida bench and the cheering section. Even the baby's loving it. The baby has no idea where that shot is. <laughs> Just here. Six-point game. Timeout UAB. Here come the Bulls. One of these days, I'm gonna say it. Probably. You got closer there. I mean, it's like I, I know it. It's just, just I blame being from Jersey on a lot. Pryor appears to be well on his way to his 11th double double of the year. Here's a three in the corner. It's good. It's Daniel Ortiz, a transfer from North Alabama, with a big time blazer answer. But a smart move. He didn't take the initial shot that he had. Getting his footwork ready, he took a little rhythm dribble and made a higher percentage shot. Miguel drives it into Davis. No, look at the crash on the glass from Brandon Stroud. Who is this foul going to be on? This is a big one. It's not a, it's not a good word, but part of the reason why he was able to crash is that he's not going to go get a body, right? Again. Yes, he's got three fouls. It's different than having four, but you really want to avoid picking up that fourth until you get well into this second half. Lindbergh's just not the same guy because of the foul issue. Brandon Stroud will have a handful of players, three of them that came over from Kennesaw State with Amir Abdurrahim. He was the A-Sun Defensive Player of the Year last year. He's been in the starting lineup 
for the most part since the Memphis game where South Florida trailed by 20, trailed by 14 at the half, came back to beat Memphis on the road. That started the 15-game win streak. Well, what else did it start? It started the demise of Memphis. Yes. That was really the turning point in the league in a couple of different ways. Ortiz. Deep in the shot block, Linda Boer has young blood on him. Linda Boer trying to post it. Linda Boer, no. And the rebound to young blood as Placer sealed Ortiz. Miguel motoring down the floor and rejected by the defensive player of the year, Yaxel Linda Boer. Do your best to avoid fouling. I mean, that's the biggest thing. So he is really more upward. And Yaxel Lendeborg leading an unusually made up Blazers team. Andy Kennedy brought in four Juco transfers this offseason. Lendeborg comes out of Arizona Western. He's a kid who was only eligible for 11 games of high school basketball. A real late bloomer who didn't even start at the beginning of the season. Became the defensive player of the year in the league. First team all conference. He has been the main show for this UAB team, which is 11 and a half away from a trip to the championship game. Main show, but part of that show has been his foul trouble. Here's Pryor. Kaysen Pryor taking over in the second half. He's got 12 of his 14 since the break, and the lead is down to five. Not the same team with Lindeborn on the bench. Three fouls for him, three fouls for Davis, Gaines, and Coleman. Those three are all in the game right now, along with Ortiz and Vasquez. It's Reed, Miguel, Stroud, Pryor, and there's Youngblood, the co-American player of the year for South Florida. Winner to the championship game against either second-seeded Florida Atlantic or 11-seeded Temple. Inside Coleman, rejected by Brandon Stroud. Really nice play, right? Good baseline runner, the slip back. They had the opportunity, good pass by Gaines, but a great recovery defensively. Tough place for an inbound. Coleman gets his printed power. Vasquez, one of three Blazers with 13. Ortiz couldn't get it off in time. Shot clock violation. <laughs> Let's check in with Myron. Yeah, Andy Kennedy was breaking down some of the X's and L's in the timeout, talking about boxing out. But he said, listen, I don't like our energy. We've got poor energy, and they're playing harder than us right now, and that has to change in this game. I think part of that energy is the foul trouble, right? You, you cannot be as aggressive. There are other terms for it in terms of what it actually does to you in terms of your aggressiveness. What's allowed anymore, but... I think that's been the biggest challenge is maintaining that physicality and toughness and aggressiveness when your best player is strapped with foul trouble. It's clearly going to take something out of you, particularly the foul that he got called on. It, you're going to be 10 times more cautious because of why your best player is on the bench. He's going to get off the bench soon. UAB has not been to the free throw line in the second half. They got there 41 times. In the first meeting with South Florida. Miguel, strong drive, and Miguel cannot finish. Miguel liked the matchup. He went right at Davis. He got a good look, just couldn't finish. Here's Gaines up top, not thrown down by Coleman. Pryor sees the outlet. It's Youngblood ahead of the pack. Oh, my word! You see that coming? Wow. That's one way to... Get it rolling in the second half for Youngblood. God, this game feels different. Look who's at the scores table. <laughs> Vasquez fouled. Good thing there is a quick whistle so we can take as many looks as we want at this. I always like it when somebody boots the ball out of bounds and we get to show it quickly. <laughs> We've had a couple. Who was it yesterday? Was it Nolan? Nolan the Nolan Nolan ago. Obviously, FAU was dunk of the year. Elijah Martin had a nasty one. So, Lendeborg has returned to the proceedings as Gaines is fouled. The last one was the third on Pryor. Now, Stroud picks up his third. If Pryor 
four guards playing each other. It's basically four on four in situations. I'm really bored. I, I'd go right at prior to the post. Coleman fumbled it, almost taken away by Reed. It's go the other way. Yeah, it was taken away by Jaden Reed. Smallest guy on the court makes one of the biggest plays. Coleman was standing out of bounds. No, really. oh, I thought it was called South Florida ball. In fact, it's going to be UAV. All right. Official pump fake. Yep. They go to Lindeborg into Pryor. Oh, boy. We haven't seen a signal yet. I think it's on Pryor. We'll find out. No, it's going to be Stroud instead. But that is his fourth foul. So that's still a big yeah. one. Brandon Stroud's made a significant impact on both ends. Uh -huh. and now he's going to turn back around and stay in the game. Now he's going to go out again. But Hines was coming in without the mask. Yeah, Sam Hines Jr. has not returned to this game, and he just came to the table and then went back. That was unusual. There's been a lot unusual in this one. Nine and a half to go. Three-point lead for the four seed over the one seed in the American semis. Games. Rebound prior and again with the outlet Reed will get up and Reed does not finish but a foul on Coleman Wow case in American championship game winner of this game has a chance to go to the NCAA tournament Probably a postseason yeah. for the losing team, but not the NCAA tournament neither of these teams are at-large candidates So Colby Knox will step up and he misses the first of two I just feel like Winning the AAC tournament and going to the NCAA tournament is validation for a very good South Florida season. And they've been, a, this has been a remarkable season. That's one for two. Hines Jr. is on the floor for the first time in a half, by the way, without the face mask. So here we go in a two point game, seven straight for the number one seed in the American. Down as many as 14 and a half. Defense is really ratcheted up. By Youngblood. Miguel to tie the score. He will do just that. Silk Miguel makes it a 59-59 affair. South Florida has really picked up their defense. They've taken passing lanes away. They've collapsed a little bit of times, but extended their pressure on the ball. Don't extend too much. Lendeborg. Only six points in the game. He rolls it home. And a chance for one more. Really really question the decision to extend the defense out too much and then give the offense an advantage and here you go you put Lindeborg at the free throw line for a three-point opportunity that's three on Chris Youngblood as well I just think their defense has been good enough on the ball where you don't have to extend you extend you, you give the opponent opportunities Yaxa Lindeborg's first points of the second half. Answer a 9-0 South Florida surge. Hines lost his dribble. Outlets to Selton Miguel. Miguel knocked away by Lindeborg. Nearly tied up. Outlets to Youngblood. In the corner prior. That's short. And... Gaines was able to keep it in. Davis, South Florida thought he was standing on the sideline at the bench. He was ruled to be inbounds. Back the other way with Lendeborg. Yeah, a late whistle for a foul. And then Lendeborg took a shot at the end of it after the foul from Youngblood. Reed is back to the bench. Lendeborg is helped off the floor. This has been a gruesome game. This is fourth foul. I think it was the second swipe. It was like the follow through swipe, which. You really don't see unless you watch it in slow-mo. So, Lendeborg will shoot the free throws for the common foul. All right, there's also an injury issue with Jaden Reed of South Florida, who left the game a couple of minutes ago. Myron, what do you have on that? Yeah, he was fighting to get back into the game, but they walked him back. Uh, it looked like they were doing a concussion test uh, as he was trying to get back in, kind of pointed to his head. School said they can't officially comment on whatever's going on with him, but... Uh, that's what it appeared to be when I saw him walk back in the tunnel with the training staff. All right, Myra, I appreciate your report back there. So, two free throws good for Lendeborg. Now Johnson selected to shoot the technical free throws, and he misses the first. I would have said, Lendeborg, if you make both, you get to shoot the technical foul shots. They shoot don't earn it. You don't. Just have to the line. 
Johnson, which the second, and the lead is six for UAB. Three free throws plus possession of the ball. Oh, and short came over here. It's about our 50th conversation with the officials in this game. Oh, I said, yeah, having fun yet? And he said, yeah, you. And I said, no. <laughs> Johnson off the inbound. Oh, Johnson is fouled on a three by Miguel. Three more free throws coming for the Blazers. Just tell FAU and Temple head back to the hotel, take a nice nap, maybe a little massage therapy. It just connects with the, the arm, the upper body. I mean, not good for South Florida when you just can't create a little flow in the game. Their ball movement. I don't want to say it's been non-existent, but it hasn't been a factor in the second half. They've scored points to make it competitive, but it really hasn't been what gave them that 10-0 run or 13-0 run, whatever it was, in the first half. Well, these two teams are trying to make the NCAA tournament as an automatic qualifier. If they make it, they'll find out where they're going at 6 Eastern tomorrow. Live bracket reaction on Selection Sunday on SportsCenter, followed by Bracketology, the woman selection special for Bracketology. Oodles and oodles coverage on ESPN and the ESPN app. What are you doing tomorrow? Uh, I'll be with you right here, 315 sure. Eastern, for the American Championship game. Just trying to get you to plug our own show in that promo that you had to do. So, thank you. Yesterday I plugged it, and I recall you were questioning why you plugged it. You've learned your ways. You're finally a company man. He's probably doing the Temple Strike. <laughs> <laughs> probably was. That was a six-point possession, seven free throws, nine-point UAB lead, and a deflection and a steal. Gaines takes it away. And the board is just so impactful. I think the instincts are something that you, you can't really describe as an analyst, but you see the impact on the floor. Jumper good for Gaines. He's got 15, and now it's an 11-0 run for UAB. Pryor, another assist for him. Hines will lay it in. The fourth assist for Casey Pryor. It's the problem with extending your defense and getting back in that 1 3 1 with, with Pryor out there for South Florida. He's so good passing the basketball. And he can see over the top of your guards. Gaines again. Nine point lead for the Blazers. In the tournament two years ago as the auto bid winners in Conference USA. Their first year of the American. Tough drive. Alejandro Vasquez will shoot two. UAB living at the line here in the second half. I don't, I don't know how you don't foul Vasquez. The way he attacks, he just gets his shoulder into you. He elevates while going sideways. That's so hard not to foul. Now, who is a foul on here? Chris Youngblood still in the game with four fouls. That's going to be it for Youngblood. It looks like he's asking on short. That's the fifth foul on Chris Youngblood. The Americans core player of the year is done with 7.07 to go. And a technical foul. Wow. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Chris Youngblood. Playing with four fouls with a lot of time left. He fouls out. There's a technical foul assist to the South Florida bench. So Johnson hits the first of two. Unreal. A South Florida team that has been so composed and poised in all these close games this year is having a bit of a meltdown with their season at stake. That's brutal. I mean, to lose young blood, that's a tough one. I mean, th to cover Vasquez, good luck, right? I mean, he's just so tough to get to the basket. He had space in transition. He attacked young blood, which was a brilliant move. And to pick up the technical. I mean, this, this is significant. Now, Vasquez will shoot the free throws for the foul on young blood. So there's a technical on the South Florida bench. Now, we were told. I think here's what happened. Chuck Jones just called a technical foul on Amir Abdurrahim. We were told in the first half, South Florida got a coach's warning. box warning. Yep. Which is unusual, but Amir Abdurrahim was maybe out of the box there, barking at the officials. He gets a technical. 
Vasquez misses the free throws, but it is a 13-2 run, and run is really not the right word. It's a 13-2 crawl, mainly at the line. Yeah. And UAB's up 11. Miguel for three, and now South Florida's going to have to do it without Youngblood, but they've got Miguel, who Amir Abdurrahim called their MVP yesterday. Lindemore drops it off for Davis, and that's the fourth foul on Pryor. More free throws coming for the Blazers. Good play by Lindeborg, just really under control, patient. I don't know how much of a play on the ball that is. I'm surprised people aren't swizzling their fingers in here. Considering what we've reviewed, that's seriously, I'm happy they're not. Well, the, the young but the tackle, that, that, technically, that, that. you don't see that unless you review it and watch it in slow mo. In the game, you're like, yeah, oh, it happened. Davis 74%. Remember the first time these teams met, South Florida took 19 free throws, hit nine. Jeez. UAB took 41 free throws, hit 30. Look at this graphic. So if you wonder why it's chippy and choppy, here you go. But who does that favor? Team that's up by 10 points. There's a reason why they're up. I mean, that's the thing. Like to to make it a physical contest where it's going to almost be determined by foul trouble. I don't think that favors UAB. You're going to have to make shots here for South Florida. That and Miguel helps. makes another. He's heating up. He's got 17 on five threes. The lead's down to seven. Sixth man of the year. Six man playing. Yeah. 29 minutes a game off the bench. Like Jamal Crawford is a six man. Reed knocks it away. There's still a long, long time to go in this game. Well, considering it took us three hours to get to where we're at right now. <laughs> yes, I'd say that six minutes is going to take another hour. The good thing is uh, nobody is starting late except for us. We'll be right here on ESPN 2 in the next game. Lendeborg, no. Rebound, Reed. The freshman matched up with Lendeborg with the three fouls. What's he going to do? He's going to try to take him. Reed into Lendeborg. Reed around Lendeborg. Very smart play, Jaden Reed. Lendeborg now with his fourth foul. And it's funny. It's like, I, I don't know what you can do except let him score. Uh, and Lindeborg saying, no, don't take me out. I think you have to uh, because of because of the fact that a lot has not gone South Florida's way, Andy Kennedy's got to take Lindeborg out. You, you've got to know there are going to be some calls going the way of South Florida, and you don't want Lindeborg to be on the wrong side of that. That's a game. That's part of the game you have to play. Like you got to have feel as a coach to say, all right, what's the game doing, and, and what what would the human condition make an official do? Right? Start the field goes the other way. Spring Sports in full swing. The American Conference on ESPN Plus is your exclusive home for more than 500 women's lacrosse, softball, and baseball games. ESPN Plus, the destination for all American Spring Championships. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash AAC. Two free throws for Reed. The lead is down to five. It's a big possession. Lindenburg's out. You're going to extend your defense. Christian Coleman, who has four fouls, replaces him. Coleman receives the pass. Coleman takes it to the rim. No. Rebound prior. Up the floor with Stroud for South Florida. Miguel. Who wants another? Johnson saves it into Davis. Up ahead to Coleman. Miguel defending. And Tony Tony will pull it out. First minutes of the second half for him. The scramble drill finds its way to Johnson with 5.15 to go in the first semifinal here in Fort Worth. Winner gets FAU or Temple, who will play at some point tonight. Johnson, a strong take and a left-hand delivery. Just an extended defense. There's going to be some opportunities to attack. Reed, Miguel, shot fake. Miguel leading into Davis. A foul is called on Davis, his fourth. This is Brother Johnson. Look, they're, they're going to take that Another technical foul has just been called, by the way. Goodness gracious, guys. We're trying to show and this one's been called against UAB. This is... And if so, is that five? Well, Davis and Coleman each have four. I'm not sure who was on, but Davis is walking to the bench. Yeah, I think Davis is out. He's done. I mean, goodness gracious. This is where you got to have the conversation. The leaders on the floor need to have the conversations with everybody to say, get out of your own way, right, at this point. 
Get out of your own way. Like sometimes you need to help your own teammates, the pride, the ego, all those things. Like we've all had it as players. Part of it is what makes you good. But you've got to have poise in these situations. Javian Davis is fouled out on a technical foul for his fifth. But again, going back to it, things have gone against South Florida. You know, perceptive, right? It, it, they've gone against South Florida. Technical fouls, you know, young blood's out. Like, you have to be aware of that. Like, okay, it's a foul, it's great, whatever. Who cares? But to get that technical, it changes the entire feel of the game when you've done everything in, within your capabilities of getting yourselves a lead. I'd love to know what Javian Davis said because it didn't seem very expressive. Well, look, but he got called for it anyway, and that ends his night. There's not a, a billion Cameron crazies in here, so you hear a lot more. And, and that's something that you have to take into account in these tournament settings. Like, a lot of times it's the same stuff you've said before, but here it's hurt. Unbelievably, we're still in the one and one portion of this game. Miguel will get the end one. Self Miguel is going to have to take over, it feels like, and he has been taking over of late. Here, Abdur Rahim said yesterday he's been our most valuable guy because he's allowed us to bring him off the bench. And he said, I'm not making this up. Not one time has he ever made it about himself. He doesn't always start, he typically finishes. He's got 19. This is a four point game with under five to go. He would be in some trouble. Johnson gets it across half court to Vasquez. Inside Coleman and Christian Coleman at the rim for two. Good timeout, Andy Kennedy. You're going to talk about this again. Uh, a timeout, a timeout for a wet spot on the floor. I actually like, in a weirdest way, I like that timeout if he took it. I, he may need them. And we have two left. But I think there's some things to talk about. Oh. It was a spot on the floor where Vasquez slipped. I just think there's a lot to talk about. You got to get to that under four without losing any more momentum. Coleman's got 10, by the way, five double figure scores for UAB. Reed on a rainbow pass from Pryor. Reed slicing through the defense. Oh, Reed. what a finish! Jaden Reed, the Long Island native. They call that Strong Island where he's from. Oh, Look at this. Pryor nearly took it away. Didn't want to commit his fifth foul. Coleman gets hammered by Miguel. Who holds his right arm up in the air as if anybody has any question it's on him How That's the Reed? third on Miguel Reed though. I mean going back to the play against Lindeborg He just attacks and attacks and gets him to pick up that fourth foul Reed makes the drive just gets through defense really tough to stop and Lindeborg doesn't want to pick up another one He's gonna keep his distance Reed's been really good. Yeah, he yeah. took a hard fall really hard fall Long Island Lutheran, terrific high school, and then to a state title in New York State. Again, he's listed at 5'10", 161, and usually when you're listed at 5'10", 161, yeah, it's called program, you're right? not 5'10", and you're probably not 161. Toughest kid pound for pound on the floor. Why do you get a pound for pound business? Okay. 161. That's fine. Boy, you know why I'm doing it. Over the for two. I was never called the toughest pound for pound, even though I was like 45 pounds. You were just lacking pounds. That's really the toughest. Yeah, that's the main reason why Reed got to get it across half court. Stroud will. Here's a three for Knox. Look at Pryor high point the ball out for Reed. No, Pryor chases it again. There are like three Case and Pryors on the floor right now. Miguel driving it. Lendeborg in the air. Blocked from behind by Vasquez. Wow. That's Lendeborg with four fouls. Had to be awfully careful. And UAB advances the ball with Gaines. This is turning into absolute schoolyard ball. Except they don't call fouls on the schoolyard like this. Gaines, Coleman, Coleman, wow. yes sir, over the top of Pryor. Oh, Pryor sitting back too, he didn't want to pick up another foul, I mean, you can just see, like, you really have to do your defense early because at the rim, no one's really going to contest. Knox, Pryor, 
He wants Reed to take it instead. Around and out for a three. Down to three minutes to go. UAB has managed this extended pressure pretty well. They've only turned it over seven times in all the chaos of this game. I also think they've done a good job of keeping South Florida from being aggressive. That's Nebraska is just so tough. Miguel's fourth foul all in the second half. And it, it's really, it's it's been one heck of a performance. A lot of fouls called, technical fouls, reviews. It's a hard foul. A ton of people just swizzling their finger in the air for reviews, which just annoys the heck out of me. Vasquez at the line, one for three. UAB 22 of 29 at the free throw line. Byron, what you got? Yeah, he was saying, we go up nine here, they're going to get tired and desperate. Make sure everybody's available to make a play. We looked at everyone in the huddle and said, box out, box out, box out. That was the theme for Andy Kennedy during that last time out. Make sure you remember the word out. It's not box, 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 because they've got a couple players with four fouls. Yeah. Lindeborg and Coleman. Pryor, Stroud, and Miguel have four fouls for South Florida. Chris Youngblood fouled out at the 7.07 mark. Pryor sounded like he was on like the third tee box with Tiger getting ready to tee off. He was very considerate of not making too much noise over there. As if his jacket wasn't making all the noise needed in the arena. Not the green jacket, it's the Rose jacket. Pryor missed a big three, rebound to Gaines. And possessions at a premium now for South Florida with 2.15 to go. And the number one seed in the American on the ropes. Gaines is going to take it all the way. Didn't think he'd be... Uncontested to the basket, but Pryor pulled up and Gaines extends the lead to 10. And Gaines was just calculated, right? He wasn't committed to going to the basket, understanding the situation with about two minutes left. Just took his time and it froze Pryor. Stroud missed it. Lendeborg's got it. With that rebound, Yaxa Lendeborg has just set the single season American rebounding record. Another double double for him. And now he'll throw it up top to Coleman. Trying to be a little too fancy, but Coleman got it back. South Florida is running out of time. This is where you, you don't want to be careful, but you want to be deliberate. Those two things are different, slightly, but different. Gaines. Gaines three to shoot it. Gaines with a triple! Eric Gaines may have just put the final dagger into South Florida's heart. Stroud in for two. No timeout taken. Inbound to Gaines. And Reed pokes it away. And Reed was the last to touch it with 59.8 seconds to go. This is just big time. I mean, you really don't have a lot going here. Kind of lines it up just enough to get it off. What are we doing here? I don't know, but Andy Kennedy's screaming about something. The call was out of bounds to UAB. It was not reviewed. Thank God. Now, South Florida, do you have to foul? I would think you do. Coleman. Oh, Coleman! And a technical foul has been assessed. For the love of all things Birmingham. Enough. Yeah, that works. Christian great. Coleman's out of this game now. He's the second player to foul out on a technical. I, mean, I mean, why just look the other way? Right? Like in this moment, in this situation. You're up and you're going to win and advance to the championship game. Don't make it about you. It's hard. I get it. Like, I get it. Like, trust me. I I've been there. I, I haven't always done it right as a player. I get it. But you've got to talk to one another about these moments and these situations. It can't be about you. Right? You make that mistake. You make that about you. And that's what they're talking about. It's all good, though. Just know that... Like, Good guys make big mistakes, selfish mistakes. It happens. Hopefully, it's something you learn from. The great point is just not a mistake you can afford at this moment in the game. Three players have fouled out. All of
Team of the technical on their ledger. <laughs> Did you get one today? I still got time. I'm gonna get kicked out in the second game. There's a second game? <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to start 30 it's minutes ago. 12 point game, Miguel steps in for two. And he's got a pretty shot. Rebound Lendeborg. Lendeborg down the floor. Lendeborg windmills UAB into the title game with a final exclamation mark. He's really had to manage that foul trouble throughout the course of this one. Played with foul trouble in the first half, did it with the second half. Prior three, South Florida will use its second timeout, but it is window dressing at this point because Yaxel Lendeborg and the UAB Blazers are 28 terrific season. Yeah. They've beaten everybody. Uh, they, they would arguably, they're the superior team that really needs that rhythm and flow to be good. Well, Pryor steals it, throws goes. it off Johnson. Case and Pryor has just been electric to watch today. I think there are guys like Pryor out there that are often overlooked because the negative about them is like, wow, he's just an energy guy. It's like, eh, you could do a lot more with energy yeah. guys than you can with no energy guys. Another Juco kid, here's knocks off the inbound. All right. for three. Hang on a second. Let's not put the final stamp down on this game. Gains ahead to Vasquez. This might do it. Vasquez, he'll lay it in. Back to 10. The final 20 seconds, Alejandro Vasquez, one of five players in double figures. Knocks three, is in and out. Rebound into the hands of Daniel Ortiz. And that will be that. The one seed goes down here in the American semifinals, and the UAB Blazers, in their first year in the league, are going to the championship game. Look, first off, congratulations to UAB.